So far away, Lucas. What's your favourite weapon from a Final Fantasy game? Well, they managed to put a gun inside of a giant sword, Carl. What do you think? <laughs> Fucking yeah, gun blade. Final Fantasy VIII stays winning. The Buster Sword is arguably one of the most eminently recognisable weapons from video games as a whole, and it's not hard to see why. It's a six foot hunk um, length of steel that a guy swings around at half the speed of sound while fighting a shirtless man who's also an angel and a god and can <laughs> destroy planets. What is Sephiroth at the end of that game? I don't know. I just start referring to him as a god. Is Supernova the most OP broken shit a character's ever done that only does 4,000 damage? It doesn't even do 9999. That's the thing. Like, if there's any attack anywhere that should be a one-hit kill, it's Supernova. Folks at home, <laughs> you know what Supernova is? Here is Safer Sephiroth's ultimate attack, Supernova. That, like, you can survive that by blocking. <laughs> anyway, despite the weapon looking all kinds of ridiculous, Final Fantasy as a series has gone to great lengths to explain why it actually totally makes sense to swing around a sword that size, you guys. So we're talking about the Buster Sword and we can't yeah. not talk about his wielder, Cloud Strife. Yeah, and I know people in the comments, Cloud Strife is not the original wielder of the Buster Sword. That is Zach Fair, and then before that... Zach Fair's own mentor, Angeal, um, as seen in the game Crisis Core, uh, which I love just because you can tell that the PSP is screaming during every cutscene. I have never seen a game that stretches the hardware it's on to its limits harder than the cutscenes of Crisis Core. Have you seen them? Um, yeah, I watched them on YouTube when I was younger. I didn't have the game itself. I have got the game knocking about somewhere. And have you ever heard as well why that game has never got a remaster or a re-release? No. Well, it's because one of the characters in that game's appearance is based on a Japanese musician called Gact, and he's just never given permission for him to use it again. <laughs> so they can't make the game. That's also the game as well, where someone makes the cardinal sin of video games and they let Sephiroth's final boss theme start playing. There's like a cutscene in the game where it's uh, Sephiroth during a training session and things get out of hand, but well, then his boss theme starts playing. So, like, oh, why did you let him do this? <laughs> Don't let him play his theme song. It is like, uh, what is it, when he was announced for Smash Bros and his theme song starts playing and Cloud's eyes get big and he's like, oh no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he just fucking annihilates Mario. I, I never thought I'd get to the point where I saw Luigi and then I thought Mario dying on screen. <laughs> anyway... Cloud Strife. Like Lucas, thoughts on Cloud Strife? He's so cool. He is, but I feel that the design got way too edgy when he started appearing in shit like Kingdom Hearts and Advent Children. Like, do you know in Kingdom Hearts where he gets like the single wing and then the Buster Blade's got bandages around it? <laughs> yeah, bandages, belts, zippers, just add it all on Cal. And then you've got him in Advent Children where he's actually got a new sword that he made that's seven swords in one. It's like, oh, come on, <laughs> Really? <laughs> Did you really need seven swords? I think we could both agree that the best scene in Advent Children is where Cloud needs to jump really high so everyone just throws him. <laughs> like, Joey, he jumps. He's like, oh, no, he needs help. So, like, you get Tifa, jump, and then throw him in midair. But that's not how momentum works. Oh man! And the thing is, we can't talk about Final Fantasy remakes. You've not what? You've not played it yet, have you? Uh, no, I was waiting for a PS5 version of the game that recently has actually been announced. And it's a shame we can't talk about it more because that game completely turned me around on Cloud. And now I love him as a character, unironically, because that game just it nails his characterization and. 
Please tell me that you've at least seen the scene. Of where you know Cloud I've seen that scene, Carl. Where Cloud's in a dress, and he's like, <laughs> and it's like, Cloud, you're, it's like, yeah, nailing it, I know, let's move on. <laughs> it's like, that is fucking confidence right there. Oh my god, that makeup, and that dress. Nailed it, I know, thank you, moving on. The Buster Sword is super cool, but it is really stupid. Yeah, it, like, it looks cool, it's iconic, it's now like, you know, a staple of video games. Like, cause I think every, like, RPG has a Buster Sword equivalent. It's like, you know, it's a huge fucking Buster Sword. And yeah, I know, fans of Berserk, it's based on the Dragon Slayer. I get it, we know. <laughs> Guts of Dragon Slayer is like, you know, the, the original great big massive whack-off sword that a character swings around using inhuman strength. But we're talking about video games now. And like even in the Final Fantasy series itself, because the Buster Sword um, has made multiple appearances outside of Final Fantasy VII, even in those games, the descriptions of it describe it as um, a sword wielded by a famed blue-eyed warrior. Um, its massive heft makes it look impossible to wield, let alone pick up. <laughs> so so even, the, even Final Fantasy acknowledges, yet yeah, nobody can wield this except for a badass like Cloud. But it's also the game where, like, Sephiroth has an eight-foot long sword. Yeah, and he fights with that. And the thing is, he can't even buddy hold that shit. <laughs> it's, it's all these are the same series where in, like, the next game, Final Fantasy VIII, they have a guy who has a revolver with a sword on the end of it. <laughs> and that somehow makes more sense than the Buster Blade, because whilst there's never been an official confirmation of the exact specifications of the Buster Sword, um, the countless people online who've made replicas of it that Man at Arms YouTube channel, I think he made a Buster Sword once. I'm a pretty strong guy, but just carrying the Buster Sword out of my workshop pretty much wrecked my back and arm. This has got to be one of the most ridiculous, huge sword blades I've ever made. This thing can barely be lifted. The idea that someone could swing this thing around is ridiculous. And like in canon, it's like, yeah, but Cloud's a soldier which is like a soldier. He's got superpowers. And then again, yeah, he's in a world where magic exists and his best friend's a fucking dog. So, Carl, the game acknowledges that it makes no sense, but then pretends yes. like it makes all the amount of sense. Yeah, so I should explain what I mean by that. And whilst some games in the Final Fantasy series have acknowledged that the Buster Sword is unwieldy, they do note that it would be unwieldy to anybody except for Cloud or someone of similar skill. So the complaint about its heft and size can kind of be ignored when you realise, well, the person who wields it has super strength, so that makes sense. Well, another common complaint from fans is, well, how does it stay on his back? Which is admittedly a common trope in video games where it's far more egregious with Cloud because the thing he's attaching to his back is half the size of him. So it's a common trope in video games, isn't it? If a character has a weapon, it will just attach to their back. Yeah, especially back in the day when it was like a PS1 game. It's like, just don't ask questions. And it still happens in games to be saying very few offer an in-universe explanation for why the weapon just magically attaches to the character's back beyond fuck you, don't ask. And I think the only one besides Final Fantasy, as we'll get to in a moment, is Halo, uh, where they say the Mjolnir armor has uh, magnetic holsters in the back so that Spartans can always carry a spare weapon. And oddly enough, that's the same explanation of how the Buster Sword sticks to Cloud's back. There is a magnetic holster on his back, something that was present in the very earliest concept art of Cloud to exist, which you can see behind me. And it was intended for it to be a featured part of his design um, in that PS1 game. But the problem was the, just the constraints of the hardware stopped them from including that element of his design. But they had to just dedicate all those polygons to his hair instead. Got it, okay. That's the point, yeah. <laughs> if you look at, like, because uh, you've got the article in front of you now, haven't you? If you scroll down, you can see the early, like, um, uh, artwork of Cloud, and that hair is the one fucking consistent. <laughs> and Lucas, before we move on, what's your favourite shit haircut from a Final Fantasy game? Why is it Seymour from Final Fantasy X? Do the hair horns. God, I don't even remember who Seymour just is. Just type in right now, Seymour FFX, and tell me what you see. Oh, God, no, I forgot my <laughs> that's, that's it, that's the reaction. When you said, I don't know, what, I don't remember, I'm like, yes, we get to do this again. But I think the only character in any video game who even comes close to having a haircut that shit is that guy from Sword and Shield who just has the sword hair, but it looks like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you see him, he looks like a walking dick. Anyway, bringing it back to Final Fantasy VII and the Buster Sword, um, there are supposedly magnetic holsters on the back of Cloud's outfit that help the sword stay in place. But another complaint is, like, you know, Cloud's design. It's like, uh, you know what Cloud looks like, right, Lucas? 
I certainly do, yes. Right, you look at his design and there's something that's a little bit off about his design, isn't there? Um, a little bit asymmetrical, if you were, and what is that? Ah, oh, the, uh, the little pauldron that he's only got on one side of his shoulder. And it's got the bolts in it to make it look edgy and cool. But again, there is an in-universe explanation for it, and it is partly because of the Buster Sword. Because as you might imagine, Lucas and folks at home, uh, the size and heft of the Buster Sword makes it exceedingly difficult to draw when combat begins. So Cloud canonically does not wear armor on the shoulder from which he draws the Buster Sword to facilitate that. And the in-universe explanation is that when Cloud first started swinging around the Buster Sword, he found it really difficult and unwieldy. So he removed the powder from his, his right shoulder, is it? Yes. Oh, so is that the ice cream van outside again, Lucas? Of course it is, Carl. Is th Why is there an ice cream van? <laughs> it's like, with... I'm lucky it's grey and dingy and dark. <laughs> what? What? I can hear it over the mic. And it doesn't stop the fact that... Like, you know, the Buster Sword still looks really fucking dumb, but I appreciate that they try to explain it more than not at all. So far away, Lucas, straight to it, favourite video game weapon. Oh, God, that's a tough one. Like, the, there is the classics, like, the Buster Sword and the Master Sword. Yeah. But I kind of want to say the Needler. The Needler? The Needler is the only correct answer when the question is favourite gun. Uh, because something I have long wanted to own and have on display in my house is a life-size needler. Because I think there are people out there who make life-size weapons, like from video games and stuff like that. And I've seen people have like the assault rifle on their wall, or like a Lancer from Gears of War. It's like, that looks so fucking lame. That looks, because it's grey and boring and dull. And then every now and again, I'll see just floating around on the internet. It's like, oh, you can get a, a life-size needler made with actual crystals. It's like, if you put that in a like glass display cabinet with lights, that'll look fucking sick. That is a conversation starter right there. And I want to like, you know, give my classic Destiny shout out because the weapons in that game are not only badass, but they all have like lore behind them that's really cool. Okay, yeah, go on, give me an example. I can't really give, like, specific examples off the top of my head, because, again, it's Destiny and the lore's kind of ridiculous, but... Yeah. Yeah, you just go onto every page and it's like, ooh, show lore of weapon, and each one has, like, a really cool quote or backstory to them, and all of that. And to go back to Halo, every weapon in that series has a wiki page, like, longer than a giraffe's dick, <laughs> and they are all incredible. And the alien weapons, for example, have lots of quotes from, like, the novels and stuff, where humans first encounter them, like, the fuck is this? <laughs> so, so can you imagine, like, being a soldier on the battlefield and you encounter a needler for the first time? Yeah, all you've got is, like, your assault rifle and your battle rifle and then giant pink needles starting impaling you in the face. And they just, like, bounce off of walls and home in. Like, <laughs> can you imagine you're driving in your war target and you're being chased by needles and you've got to report that to HQ? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, we, we've been pursued by the enemy, I think. So, what do you mean you think? Well, some a, a, a shard of pink glass is chasing us, and the last person to stop to see what it did um, is currently screaming in agony on the floor with shrapnel in his eyeballs. It's like, oh, don't drive back here, then that sounds scary. 